In the last video, we were talking about compound interest, and we saw how that can be applied to uh, calculating your future salary if you know the annual raise. We talked about what that means for the effective interest rate for a credit card. You know, if you have an unpaid balance, the annual percentage rate becomes something different when you look at the effective interest rate. And we also talked about just investing money, okay? But all of those events are happening at discrete moments in time, whether it's once a month, once every three months, once a year, but not everything works that way. Some things happen on, this con on a continuous time spectrum like population growth, bacteria growth, radioactive decay. And when those situations happen, we need to use this formula for continuous compounding. So when we talk about con continuous versus discrete, discrete is happens there, it happens there. Continuous is like the time spectrum that we're on. Time is is continuous. There are no jumps, there are no blips, there are no gaps. It's just always going, right? So if that's the case, we have this formula for continuous compounding. Now, a lot of the stuff is going to be the same. A is still going to be your final amount. P is your principal. R is your rate. And T is still going to be time that's measured in years. But the E... E is a very, very special constant. It's called Euler's constant. And E is approximately equal to 2.71828 and so on. This is as important of, uh, of a number as pi. In fact, both E and pi are irrational numbers. And not only that, they also have their own special buttons here on the calculator. So you've got two places where you're going to see E. One of those is right above the division, so you can do second division, and you're going to get E. And so it gives you that decimal representation. Now, it looks like there's a pattern that it goes 2.71828.1828, but it kind of falls off after that, so it does not have a pattern in terms of its decimal representation. A lot like pi is not, there's no pattern to it, right? It's irrational. The other place where we see E is down here next to this button that says LN. So if you press second LN, we're going to be seeing that here in just a moment, you get E and a power and parentheses because a lot of times when we use E, it's not by itself. It's part of a formula where it's going to be raised to a power. So it's kind of nice that we have it there. So we'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, there are a lot of different ways of calculating E. Uh, the most common one is a calculus thing where you take the limit as n approaches infinity of this expression. 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n. And it goes back to something that I was talking about previously. When I said that if you keep increasing the number of compoundings per year, that means that the amount that you're going to be earning is going to get less and less and less. But you would also be increasing the power, which means there are more times that you are increasing your balance. But there's going to be a limit to that. So we saw that if we go from monthly, so if we go from quarterly to monthly, we earn more money. If you go from monthly to daily, you earn even more money. If you go from daily to every second, you earn even more money, but there's a limit. And that's where this formula comes in. That's where the E comes in. Okay. So let's do a few examples so we can see the difference in the two different formulas between uh, compound interest and continuous compounding. All right, so let's take a look here. We're going to invest. Again, we just have this money laying around because we are flush with cash. So let's invest $17,500 at 7.2% interest. And we're going to do this for nine years. We're going to do it two different ways. The first way is we want to compound this semi semi annually. Now, semi annually, in case you are not really thinking about it, that means that you have an n value of 2. Semi-annually means twice a year. All right, so let's make sure we write the correct formula. Now, since this is happening at discrete moments, two times a year, we're going to go back and use that compound interest formula. A equals P times 1 plus R over N 
to the nt. All right, so the amount that I'm gonna have at the end is my initial value of 17,500 times one plus my rate is 7.2. Now make sure you convert that percent to the decimal correctly. Anytime you make a conversion between a percent and a decimal, the decimal point is always moving two places. So here we scoot two places to the left. That's going to be 0 0.07, that'd be 7% two. Semi-annually, so that means n equals two, raised to the two times nine. Now, I'm not doing this by hand. I'm just not. I could, maybe, I don't want to. There's no fun in that. It's gonna take a long time, which is why we have the calculator. So 17,500 times one plus point zero seven two divided by two times per year, raised to the, now remember the issue we had in the last video, use your parentheses before you do the two times nine, like that. That way the two and the nine we know are clearly in the power. And we come up with this. So our final amount is $33,076 and five cents. All right, so that was semi-annually. What if I want to compound this continuously? Now keep in mind that continuously does not have these discrete events. It's happening all the time. It's an entirely different formula. So the formula is A, equals p times e that is raised to the rt. Keep in mind that that rt power is only connected to the e, not the p. So my final amount is, again, 17,500 times e raised to the, now notice there's no n here, okay? It's just gonna be r, which is 0 0.072, times t, which is the number of years, and that's nine. All right? I mean, this is a calculator problem. That's, that's why we have the calculator here. All right, so 17,500. I showed you two different places to use the e. Since we have to do e raised to a power, let's do the one that's down here. So second ln, so I get e, the power, and the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I have 0 0.072 times 9. Make sure you type things correctly. Here's what we know. It's still for the same amount of time. It's still for 9 years. It's continuously compounded, so it should be more than this, but it shouldn't be, like, way more than that. It might be, I don't even think it'll be $1,000 more than that. If you get something that's, like, 40, 50,000, and there's only 33 here, you're a bit off. So let's see what happens. Yep, see, it's not even that much more, right? It's, what is that, $380, 368? Maybe, I'm not even doing the math right, whatever. But it's, it's not that far away, right? So again, if you get something that's way off, then you know that you need to check something, check your parentheses, I don't know. So $33,454 and Rounding this to the nearest penny, that's going to be 99 cents. Okay? So, yeah. That's pretty much all you have to do is do the formula correctly. Now, let me show what happens if you do the formula incorrectly. So, incorrectly, 17,500. If you do E raised to the, I uh, suppose you do 0 0.072. If you close the parentheses and you open them again to do 9 like that, Let's see what we have. See, now I have 169,250. That's, that's not even close. It's nowhere near close. And you should be mindful enough to know that this, this can't be. Even continuous compounding is not going to blow up. Uh, one of the other videos that we talked about, finding the simple interest. Simple interest would be taking your principal times your rate, 0 0.072, times the time, which is 9. This is not giving you the final amount, but it's telling you an estimate of how much interest you could earn. So I would be earning about $11,000 in interest, plus what I started with, 
So I expect an answer on the very, very low end of 28,840. So I get 33,000. That is close enough, right? See, it's nine years, so I have nine years of earning interest on interest on interest. So that seems to be fairly reasonable, which means this guy's going to be reasonable too. So you need to think about the reasonableness of your answer. That's why we do little checks like this to see how much my interest earned should be as an estimate. Add it to the original so that you can compare.